Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Old School. In today's video, we're featuring a 1955 Chevy 3100 that belongs to Chuck. He built this car for SEMA. If it is your first time passing by the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys like this video, be sure to drop a big like. Let's go. How you guys doing? So today I have here is my 1955 Chevy pickup 3100. It's, a, it's an original paint truck. I polished out the paint to make it shine a little bit. Um, founded in, where did I find it? North Dakota. So this came from up north. It was on a railroad uh, station, still working, still running with the inline six. And uh, brought it down here and the guys from GSI said, hey, we want to sponsor you and invite you over to SEMA. So they said, you have uh, 10 months to do this. So I got on it and this is kind of the result. So I'll walk around the truck, show you guys a little bit of what I did. We'll start from the back and we'll head up towards the front. If you notice right away, the cab and the bed, they are of the same era. However, 1955, 56 and 57 never came fleet side. So now the name of this truck is GMO. It's been genetically modified organism, if you will. The term GM, GM Chevy, whatever. So I put a fleet side bed on a 55 cab, which from the factory didn't come that way, but it's from the same era, so it, it would fit. Uh, it's, it's a Barden bumper, which is a, an aftermarket bumper that would be put on farm trucks. This is a farm truck because it has no chrome on it. Everything was raw or white. And when you move to the front, you'll see that. We take a look around here. These are wheels that, they're my design. They're cut by the Greening Company, Greening Auto Company in Alabama. Great group of guys over there. Highly recommend them. Check them out on Instagram. And uh, they went ahead and did this, this scheme for me. It's a little bit reminiscent of the GMC hubcap from the 60s, mixed in with some Chevy with the center cap. And uh, the spokes, my favorite number is eight. So I went ahead and drew eight spokes and eight windows. So they're called 88s. Nice. A uh, little bit of the interior. It's mostly factory interior, obviously, except the carpet and the seat. Those are reupholstered, but everything else stayed true to what Chevy did back in the 50s. And it has AC. And it has AC and the horn works and Bluetooth radio and all the bells and whistles, the creature comforts. Moving around towards the front, there's that farm look I was talking about. So it's got the white bumpers, the white grill, nothing's chrome. So this is like a baseline, you know, model from back in the day. Um, I like it. I like either one, but the white sets it off pretty nicely with different contrast. And another one of my signatures is, uh, is the white frames and white motors that I do. So in this case, I did a white Wimbledon white LS3 6.2 motor. It's stock, kind of like what comes out of a uh, Corvette, and uh, just added some vintage styling to it to make it seem a little bit more age appropriate, if you will, era. These uh, wax pencil markings that you see, people ask, what are those? Why'd you leave those on there? Those were actually on there from factory, and uh, I took a picture of it, and I traced over it also, and after the firewall was refinished, I went ahead and put the wax pencil markings back on it as the factory would have done it. So I think that's something unique about it. I always like stuff like that. We'll uh, walk around to the bed. And this is a concept that Tricky Air and Billet and I came up with for the beds. It's like, how do you, people say, how do you access the back? How do you maintenance it? How do you clean it? How do you put gas? And it's just, you know, basically hit a button and the bed goes up. So with these Tricky Air bed shocks, what they allow you to do is Everything I just mentioned, you can clean, you can service, you can add fuel, you can check all the things that are going on here. And at the same time, you hit a button and it goes right back down. So it's a cool feature and it's, uh, it's very functional and allows you to use the bed. So as you see back here, when I, when I made the bed come up, uh, the company that I, that I work with now specifically is GSI. GSI is a frame manufacturer. They also make front half back halves for everything from 1955 all the way to now OBS. As of SEMA 2019, they also offer an OBS chassis, which is 88 to 98. 
So they span a lot of trucks for many, many, many years. And this is a, a, a f my first full frame that I've ever done. I've done front half, back halves, and you know it was as instructed, plug and play. You know, my, my bed went on, my cab went on, my front clip went on, everything went on as it should. And the drivability of it is just superb right now. I just got back from Daytona. That's about, I don't know, 400 miles away. Just went up and back the same day. Left in the morning, came back. So I just got back now. So you see a little bit of little road, uh, road debris and what have you. That's what it was. But it rode really, really good. Very, very happy with the product. The tailgate, I had to repaint. Um, I've obviously, uh, there's, it didn't look that way. Remember that the bed was from a 5859, which is a fleet side, but it didn't come in this color. So I had to use some special techniques and uh, use single stage paint to recreate this patina on the bed only. If you also you look over here, this is a, the, where the original gas tank, gas fuel is, the refuel. So I put a little plug on there and GMO the name of the truck and then to charge your battery you just plug in your battery tender there so it's a cool little add-on that I did That's nice. never seen that before yeah and uh, one another thing I'm really really excited about are the the Dakota digital gauges the new RTX series Wow. So it looks like original, but once you turn it on, it'll tell you everything. Speed, water temperature, fuel, and you can just toggle between different things. Transmission temperature, clock, oil pressure, odometer. I mean, you name it, whatever you want on there. I think it'll give you a lot of numbers, too, if you ask it. Oh, no. And that's pretty much the extent of my builds. You know, I'm... I really like doing the 55, 59. That's kind of my signature. That's my wheelhouse. That's where I like to go. That's what I like to do. It's, these trucks have my, have my heart somewhere. And uh, that's what I stick to, 55 to 59. So, But I love all Chevy trucks. All right, so a little bit about the suspension. What I'm using, um, Acura dresses their frames up with, with the top of the line stuff. You know, they got the right tech shocks. And, um, what I use for this truck specifically is Acura and they design their frames to work around this. So my ride height is always two. So you hit number two, the truck goes up. That's where I'm riding. Now I'll show you, I can go a little bit higher than that. If I need for loading the truck or, or doing, making a U-turn into a sketchy area, what have you. And then my lowest setting, this is let setting three my highest. Let me go down to one now. So that's setting setting one. I can still roll here. I don't recommend going too fast anywhere unless it's inside a parking lot, real slow. But I can still roll here, and then my ride height is number two. So I'm very happy with what e level and I'm sorry what Acura has done. Their E-Level system is one that I've used at least five times, and uh, it works flawlessly. You know, um, I have a thousand miles on it. I was at Nevada, I was in Glendale at Dino's Get Down, and now went to Daytona. The whole month of November, I've been I've been traveling and riding with it, and so far so good. Real happy with what they've done. All right, Chuck. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. Well, guys, and just like that, this video is over. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, like always, 
let me know with a huge like and comment down below what you thought about this truck if it is your first time passing by the channel don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on social media at generation old school on instagram